you know that often when a product is defective, you can still use maybe the material or even sell that same product because it is good enough, just not for your A brand. Let's dive into that defects and off-spec thing a bit more. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video, it is a request video, so you see, guys, if you go and request things in the comments, you get stuff that is tailored to you. And today it is a, sort of an extra deeper dive on uh, one of my waste videos where I talked about this concept of you've got defects and then you have off-spec that is, it is defective, but it, so it's not completely on specifications, but you can probably maybe sell it or um, get it at a discount or something like that, right? There is still value in that product. And that is indeed an interesting thing because it tends to mess up your waste analysis. It tends to create sort of a culture within companies of, especially within the production organization of, well, this is not a big problem, right? So uh, um, I used to work in a cheese factory where the off spec, so the slightly lower quality cheese, and I will say here, the quality of the cheese was still good as cheese, just it was not exactly up to specific A brand specs for, for that customer. So it was sold at market, at a bulk market type of prices, which was just a little bit lower. So people would say, especially uh, team leaders and, and operations people, they would say, ah, it's, not a, it's not a big problem, it doesn't really cost us a lot. In fact, we had one type of defect that could be sold for the same price as your regular product. So people would even say, it is not a problem at all. And there is a problem for you as a continuous improvement specialist, but, but honestly also really for those businesses, because that means that you've got defects and process problems lingering around that for now are not urgent because you can still sell it at a good price, but as soon as that option dries out, because the market gets a little bit tighter, and as soon as the market gets a little bit tighter, and immediately everyone just wants the okay product. So things like that happen, and suddenly you're stuck with a whole lot of waste. So let's get into that idea, right? The cost of non-quality, that is a broader concept than just waste rework off-spec, things like that. You may have heard of the cost of quality in general. So that also includes all of the analysis that you do and the, the quality team that you keep on hand because they need to do a lot of checks. Cost of non-quality is specifically about what happens and what extra cost do you incur when there is a problem with your product, when it is not fully up to specs. And this goes way beyond just scrapping it. Waste is generally the thing that you can quite easily get in the analysis. You, you see this, right? We just throw away product. Usually we also weigh how much we throw away or we count it. And we register this and everyone knows this is, this is really a waste. But when we get into things like rework, we sort of take the material back a couple of stations, do some extra work on it, and we got a good product. So we still produced as many good products as we wanted. We didn't waste any materials, or just a little little bit maybe somewhere, but we made some minor corrections to the product. That cost a bit of time, but eh, it's not that much. And it was a lot cheaper to rework it than to make new stuff. It's very often the argument in business. So this was a good choice to do the rework, and it moves on. And then when you do this with purely labor time, that labor is somewhere in your direct labor pool. It's very often not registered separately from your normal process labor, it's very difficult to get these ones back. Or maybe you have a type of reworking where the, the material just flows back to the start. You can have this in um, all kinds of metal working, you just put the metal back into the furnace. These things also happen in a whole bunch of food products where you basically can put it back into the start as raw material and it just goes through it. But what people often forget is that you go through all of your processing steps again. So quite often you lose a little bit of that material in the rework process, count that, but also count the extra uh, heating energy that you have to put in, the, the extra machine time that you put in. All of those processing costs, they can be huge, right? Especially if you're melting down 
uh, iron or other metals again, the, the main cost of that industry isn't even really in the ore itself. It is in all of the energy they put in to heat it and then form it and heat it again. And that is tremendous. These are not waste costs because it didn't throw away the material, but they are very, very serious costs of non-quality. And then that other thing that I told, you know, with those different sorts of cheese, and this will happen also with all kinds of products, when you sell something under your regular price, or basically when you have to do something special to sell it at all, but because it is off spec and it goes away with a letter of variation or an off spec certificate or something like that, we will also see this in um, outlet stores and we'll look more at clothing. So these are all, and you have the discounted price and you have a risk of it uh, blemishing your A product name and you need to organize it. So there's a lot of cost in that as well. And the thing is, these costs may be sort of okay on the short term because it's still better to sell it and get some money than uh, to, to rework it or throw it away. But if that is then used to sort of say, ah, this isn't a big problem, this process defect that caused the rework or the off spec isn't a, a big issue. They're hiding all kinds of problems that really are there in your process. And as a continuous improvement specialist, it is your job to also point that out and you know that you want to fix those things in your organization. So let, let's get to a bit of a bit of an example of these concepts. So let, let's say that we have a t-shirt factory and uh, we're making t-shirts. Let's see, they have these buttons on them. So th this one is actually the good one because it has the nice free buttons there and it also has this little uh, sort of inside set where uh, there, there is this little label with two more buttons and that is just so that we can do some repairs at home. It's a, it's a nice thing that you find a lot in the more luxury dresses. Now, when we produce an item that doesn't have any of these very visible buttons up, up top, that's a defect. Right? This is a very clear defect. You cannot sell it like this. There probably are the little slits to put them through. Anyway, this is not an up-to-spec product, right? So what can we do? We can throw these away, or maybe we can have somebody just manually attach a couple of those buttons. So we go into that waste or rework idea, right? And by doing that, we may in the end end up with still good polo shirts, but it costs us extra handling, extra time, extra for the cost to that non-quality. Now this is a, it's a blaring defect, right? This is something you, you just cannot let slip into the market. What now if we have, in principle, a good t-shirt, it's just that those, uh, those nice little extra buttons, we forgot them. Is it worth putting them on there? Would you scrap it, completely waste it? Uh, probably not, because you, can, you could rework this. What you can also do, this is relatively common in the clothing world, is that you have these outlet shops of batches that um, didn't fully pass quality control. Now, what they will often do is that those products that really have problems uh, with them. Oh, they're taken away, but they will still say, Ooh, the rest of the batch, I don't know. If the machine wasn't putting everything on there, there is a chance that there is a couple more quality problems. Let's sort of dump the whole batch, including good ones, because we just know that there were some problems here and there, dump it all into an outlet store or a factory store or things like that. And these type of non-visual uh, problems, they also end up in those type of channels. So that is sort of an acceptable problem. It's a bit of a, an extra luxury thing to have on there. There are probably plenty of people who would still buy this. So this is off spec, but it doesn't ruin the core functions of your product. That one goes into a discount channel.
Now, of course, if you are selling business to business, these ones are always a bit tricky. You, um, well, you could try to just push it through the normal sales channels and hope that the customer doesn't notice. Not a good strategy, but it does happen. Often, it will also write this letter of deviation or of off-spec note to the customer, specifically asking them, you know, could you still accept this batch? Would be way better for the environment if we can just get it onto the market, even with this slight problem on there. And, you know, we could give you maybe a small discount or something like that. Some of your customer companies will say, well, yes, that, that's okay, especially if you have a good relationship with them. Others will press you for huge discounts. So it's always a bit of a, well, sometimes a grunting, sometimes really a, a pulling match. It depends a bit on how you are inside of your industry, what happens, but know that this concept happens a lot and you will have some difficulty finding those when you do a waste analysis because very often it is not scrap, so you will not see it there. It is also, that if we do this, so you could rework it within the uh, company, then quite often you will see the rework being done inside of the factory. And if you do your waste analysis, well, you're generally at a factory and you have access to all of the data of the factory. You can get those logs. It depends a bit on which factory, how clear they are, what has been reworked, uh, how much cost was involved in that. It always gets a bit muddy already there. But things that went out, they have very different systems. So sometimes the discount is already there very clear to the factory. This even goes for sort of waste streams that still bring in value. Again, you know, in those cheese factories, if you make cheese, you need to make whey. And all of you fitness and sports fans will know the whey protein isolates and the whey protein powders and stuff like that. That is just part of the cheese process. It used to be waste. It then became pig feed, which is like a very low margin product. Then it became actually oh, very nice. We can get the stuff you need for medicine pills, right? Little, little lactose for the tablets. Uh, we can get out those brilliant whey proteins. Now we're opening up even more very nice bioactive proteins that happen to be in the whey. So we're upgrading that side stream. And that side stream that used to be waste and it's now upgrading. These ones, you will see them, right? When you do uh, your analysis at the factory, basically with the, the team of operations around you. But if you have that idea of the sort of the discounted production, there are companies uh, that will formally first sell this in your bookkeeping software. They will just sell the whole batch at its standard cost. Then, you know, either a sales department or a specific off-spec sales department, cost of non-quality, having that department in the first place, they will try to get it into the market. They have a discount price when they made the whole deal. Then there is a financial stream going back to the factory that produced this off-spec, but it enters your bookkeeping system in a different line and you don't really see it. Be aware of those. When you work in continuous improvement and in, in world-class operations in any of those systems and you want to do a good loss analysis, be friends with your finance department. So the finance department should, I think, be involved in any of those loss analyses in the first place. They should be very interested in doing that as well. This is not the case in all of the companies that I've worked with. You as a CI specialist need to be friends with your finance department as well, not just with operations, because they will have all kinds of ways. And it's in their, it's in their job description. Not, I wanted to say best interest. It's in their job description to, to get these lines, right? To get that insight into what is happening. Did we pay for certain discounts? Did we rework certain streams? Which people were just there doing rework? the finance people will want to know this. So if you can provide them with the operational knowledge of, you know, guys, there, there was rework over the last couple of months. We've had people just sitting there sorting through our products. Then usually finance people start, oh, oh, how can I see it? Let's ask the team leaders to get that down, register it, report it, and then we will calculate the cost of that. They will like that. But if you don't really get 
intimate, uh, well acquainted with the finance department, then you're likely going to miss these, especially what happens purely on the books after it leaves the production part of your factory. So be aware of this phenomenon in defects. Technically, they, these are all defects, but there is this level of what can you still do with it. And that's why you will see a difference with waste, the real scrap, rework, sell it at a discount off spec, uh, and, and sort of half versions between all of that. When you do a material waste analysis, you want to have all of them. And I would even say you would really, really like to know what is the full cost of this defect, just calculate it as if it is scrap, and what is the money we are still getting. And sort of do the same for that rework as well. Because that way you can also add up the risk associated, because these channels, they are not free, but they're also not guaranteed to have the whole sort of value of a certain defect that is in your process, say, look, this costs us 2 million a year. We recuperate 1.8 million of that with these special channels. So right now, our direct PL impact is only 200,000, but know that there is a big risk here. So this defect itself, it has a yearly value of 200,000 with a risk of going up to 2 million. That creates a completely different way of looking at that defect and at the type of resources that a company will be willing to put into solving it as well. And the resources, you know, just teams, but also maybe investments, you need that for your improvement roadmap. So that's why check all of those costs of non-quality, be aware that there are different levels of how bad a defect is and that some of them can really be hidden away in your data and you will need to go look for them by combining your operational knowledge of what is happening, but also by working across silos. You need to be familiar with your finances, with your sales, with your logistics, because all of them, they can give you information that operations generally does not have by itself. So if you like that, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, you know, I saw that about 90% of you are not even subscribed to the channel. You don't have to, but if you want to get your updates every week of what I bring to YouTube, you know, hit that subscribe button. It would also mean a lot to me. For now, I wish you the best of luck analyzing and reducing the waste in your factory. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.